So welcome back, lesson two, where we're going to be talking about threats and vulnerabilities. It's often easy to adopt a do what I say and not what I do policy in security. The belief is that others must over secure to protect themselves from their own lack of knowledge and expertise, but that IT professionals don't make mistakes. Good security practices are designed to alleviate common threats and address vulnerabilities. A security expert therefore needs to do more than anyone to address these issues as their credibility within the industry rides on being not only trustworthy but competent. We can't stress enough that using good security practices are everyone's responsibility and not just something that novice users have to do. Okay, so we're going to take a minute before we get into vulnerabilities and, and risk. We're going to talk about the OSI model. Um, this is a conceptual model that characterizes, standardizes the internal functions of any communication system by breaking it into abstract layers. OSI stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Module, and it is a seven layer model that tries to break down and analyze what different aspects of the system are so that we can secure them better. The OSI model takes a vast number of locations at which we could have threats and vulnerabilities and organizes them in a structured way so we know where to look. This includes the physical, the data link, the network, the transport, the session, the presentation, and the application layers. The ideas behind this aren't much different than if you were securing anything whether it was a house or a vehicle or a location, but we apply it to data. The OSI model seems complicated at first when we try and talk about it. So let's simplify it in terms of a house. We have a skeleton of a house. We want to secure something in it. Obviously, the first thing we're going to need is walls. These walls are going to keep people from seeing what we have inside of the house and it's going to give us the means by which we actually have a house and not just an open infrastructure unprotected from rain and the elements. But there's one problem. We have no way in and out of the house. We need a door. That's why we introduce the data link layer. The data link layer becomes our single point of entry in and out of the house, which makes it easier for us to secure the traffic that's coming in. The next thing we need to worry about is how to find our house. If you had an entire neighborhood where every house looked exactly the same, the only way you would know which was yours was by putting an address on the house. This address becomes the way that we reference this device instead of others. The next thing we need to worry about is the transport layer. The transport layer is a little bit harder to describe. The easiest way to think about it is you're inside your house. While we don't have a lock on the door yet, anyone can come in or come out. How often do you check who's coming into your house and who's leaving? How tolerant are you of people coming in or going out? When it comes to actually securing the house, this becomes the job of the session layer. This is like having a key for our door. It's a house key that only we have, and therefore we can get in and out when we want to, but other people would have to find another way in. Now, people are going to come and visit us at our house. These people represent the data. Maybe they come in a car, maybe they come in a bus, maybe in a minivan. The method by which data is packaged and delivered to us is the presentation layer. Maybe it's a doc file, a text file, or an HTM file. Once this has arrived, we're going to need an application that knows how to interface with that file, like Word or Excel. This is the application layer. So let's talk for a minute about how we're going to use the OSI model to create a security checklist in order to troubleshoot more effectively vulnerabilities that are on the system. Our users got seven problems, and bad security practices are all of them. 
She's managed to install toolbars and other applications to her browser that are generating pop-ups and installing programs without her knowledge. When she opens Word, she gets messages that the normal template has been changed, even if she's made no changes to the document, and her antivirus program is telling her the file is infected. This is something that's happening regularly to her, even after running a scan. She's also lost control of her webcam, and it's turning on even when she doesn't want it to. She's concerned that it's filming her when she's not looking. She's been locked out of her social networking content, and she knows this because somebody's made all of her private pictures public. This is the point at which she calls a friend of hers that's familiar with technology. The most common advice that somebody who knows how to use a machine will give is that they need to update their antivirus program. They'll suggest they go with a different antivirus program or that they need to remove offending programs by using the add and remove programs in the control panel. Unfortunately for her, her problems are much more severe than what the average person thinks to do. Because she has vulnerabilities in the layer four section of the OSI model, when she tries to download antivirus programs, her computer behaves very slow, and the download just crashes. Despite this, her network card is blinking like crazy, indicating a huge amount of networking traffic. She doesn't understand what could possibly be using all of her bandwidth. What's worse is when she goes to certain sites to get antivirus software, anti-spyware software, or even her bank's website, she goes to completely different sites instead, and she's pretty sure that all of these sites are fake. While it allows her to download files, the files that she gets are, are fake files that are actually installing more viruses to her machine. And while she doesn't know it yet, there is a USB device on the side of her machine that was slipped into it by her ex. It installs control software and routes all of her web traffic and personal data through a second network device via USB. This represents a vulnerability of the Layer 2 and Layer 1 layers of the OSI model. We use the OSI model to address all of these vulnerabilities. At Layer 6 and 7, we're largely using our antivirus software, our system firewall, and other pieces of software to monitor what's installed on the machine and what it's allowed to alter. Also at layer 4 and 5, we're benefiting from the firewall and the routers, but not just those on the machine, but also those that we have on our network, overseeing all of the machines and its access to the internet. At layer 3, we're making sure that our networking drivers and libraries in the system are not being hijacked, and we're using software that is resistant to this. At layer 1 and 2, we are being very careful about what hardware we hook to our machine. We are using policies that physically limit and inspect what hardware can be used, and we're making sure that the devices that we use, like our keyboards and mice, are trusted devices. It seems silly to allow someone like an ex to install something that would let somebody see you on the webcam. What we don't realize is that USB devices can look like anything. Keyboards, mice, monitors, or even a light. So let's get back to talking about threats and vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are both the known and unidentified potential for threats to become a problem for the company. One of the things that quickly becomes apparent is that a security specialist and a hacker have many things in common. Both identify threats, both focus on vulnerabilities. The security specialist, however, tries to patch these vulnerabilities and reduce the threats, while a hacker finds vulnerabilities and tries to create more. Threats are anything that have the potential to create security issues. A user that doesn't lock the machine when they leave their desk, assets that are left unsecured, resources that can infect the computers on a network, or even a user that draws unwanted attention to the company. They are the things that a company tries to identify as risks before they become a problem. 
The creation of new vulnerabilities and threats are called backdoors. Companies and security specialists try and reduce, secure, or eliminate as many of these backdoors as possible. Hackers often create more through the use of malware and social engineering. Through the OSI model, security knowledge allows us to identify or exploit vulnerabilities, and if not addressed, these vulnerabilities become threats.